Although it is a programming concept, there are many people who use recursion to solve everyday's problems even without meaning it. In this video, you will understand how this could be possible and we will dig deeper in the concept of recursion to fully understand it. So, what is recursion? Recursion is calling the function to itself. Consider for example this case. You are driving your car in a 5 lane road and you are currently on the most left lane. You would like to take an exit, so you need to go to the most right side of the road. But you have a big problem. Your right hand side mirror does not cover the whole 5 lane road. It can show you only whether there is a car coming on one lane closest to you. So you came up with a good idea. You will keep looking in the right mirror, see if there is a car coming in the closest lane right to you. If not, you jump to that lane and then look again at the mirror to see whether there is a car coming in the lane closest to you. If not, you jump and so on until you reach the exit. That is a perfect example to a real world implementation of recursion. Notice you have kept doing exactly the same action every time. If the lane is empty, go right and so on until you reach the exit. But how do you know that you are standing in front of a recursive problem? That's easy. A problem should meet two criteria to be eligible for a recursive solution. First, the solution of the problem should depend on the collective solutions of subproblems to this problem. In our case, going from the most left to the most right of the road means moving step by step from lane to another using the mirror which covers only one lane. Second, there should be a stopping criteria. You cannot simply keep going to the right lane indefinitely. You have to stop when you reach a certain target. If we imagine a pseudocode implementation of our car lane problem, it would look similar to this. First things first. We start our function by checking if we reach the exit. If yes, we celebrate. Otherwise, if the rightmost lane is empty, we jump to it and call exit road function again to keep trying. If the rightmost lane is not empty, then we will not be able to exit the road. Note that what we are showing here is just pseudo code and it is missing some parts. So in other words, please don't try to run this function. It will not work. This is just to give you a general idea what recursion is but we will very shortly discuss a real recursive example with the full code implementation. This here is a very important part of a recursive function. This is called the base case. Here we check if we reach it our target. And what is the point of that? The point is, if we don't do that, the function will recurse indefinitely with no stopping point. In this case, the program will crash as it will consume all the allowed memory before doing what it's supposed to do. The base case usually comes the first thing in a recursive function. Forming the right base case is in many cases the trickiest part of a recursive function. The rest of the implementation is usually straightforward. To understand the concept of recursion even better, let's discuss another typical recursive problem. Problem says, implement a function that calculates the number n in a Fibonacci series. First of all, what is a Fibonacci series? A Fibonacci series looks like this. The first two numbers in the series are 0 and 1. Then, starting from the third number in the series, each number is calculated as the sum of the previous two numbers. So, 1 is a sum of 0 plus 1, 2 is a sum of 1 plus 1, 3 is a sum of 2 plus 1, and so on. This problem is perfectly eligible for a recursive solution. But why? Simply because, first, the solution of the problem always depends on the solutions of the smaller subproblems. The number n in a Fibonacci is the sum of the previous two numbers, and each of these numbers are also calculated by summing up the previous two numbers, and so on. Second, we have a stopping point. The Fibonacci of 0 is 0, the Fibonacci of 1 is 1. So, to calculate number n in a Fibonacci, we can basically keep summing up the previous two Fibonacci numbers till we reach our stopping point, which is index number 0 or index number 1, and for those we already have a solution. Also by looking at the mathematical definition of the Fibonacci series, we will figure out easily that it is a recursive problem. Fibonacci of 0 is 0, Fibonacci of 1 is 1, otherwise Fibonacci of n 
is the sum of the Fibonacci of n minus 1 and Fibonacci of n minus 2. Now let's implement the solution. Let's create a function called Fibonacci, which takes an integer parameter n. First, we define our base case, the stopping point. If n equals 0, then our solution is 0. If n equals 1, then our solution is 1. Otherwise, our solution is the Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus the Fibonacci of n minus 2. And that's it. That is our elegant and straightforward solution. I'm a little confused now. Can you please explain more? Sure, let's trace our solution to get a better understanding of it. Let's say we need to calculate the Fibonacci of 4. So, n is passed to the function with the value of 4. If n is 0, that is false. If n is 1, also false, then we end up returning Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus Fibonacci n minus 2, which are Fibonacci 3 plus Fibonacci 2. To calculate Fibonacci 3, again, n is not 0 and is not 1, then we return the Fibonacci 2 plus Fibonacci 1. Fibonacci 2 will end up returning Fibonacci 1 plus Fibonacci 0, and Fibonacci 1 will return 1, Fibonacci 0 will return 0, then Fibonacci 1 here will also return 1. Now Fibonacci 3 is already calculated. It is the sum of 1 from this side and 1 from this side, total is 2. Now the program will start calculating Fibonacci 2 here, which is Fibonacci of 1 plus Fibonacci 0. Fibonacci of 1 equals 1, Fibonacci of 0 is 0, total here is 1. So the Fibonacci of 4 equals 2, 3. As you might have noticed in this implementation, we have some redundancies. Sometimes we do the same work multiple times. For example, we have calculated the Fibonacci of 2 two times. One time when we wanted to calculate the Fibonacci of 4, and another time when we wanted to calculate the Fibonacci of 3. That is inefficient, but we will talk about ways to overcome that in another video when we discuss dynamic programming. Drawing this tree will help you visualize and understand what really happens in your recursive implementation. Without that, we wouldn't have noticed that we calculated the same Fibonacci's multiple times, for example. It is always a nice idea to trace your recursive implementation by sketching out this tree on a side paper, or in other words, to run your program on a paper and see what happens in each recursive cycle in your implementation with a concrete example like we just did. It is important to note Every recursive problem could be solved iteratively using loops. This means using recursion will never be your only way to solve a problem. But for some problems, the recursive solution comes so naturally. You will smell the recursiveness in the problem, and by checking against the criteria that we just discussed earlier, we can find if we can apply recursion or not. This is something that you will get better at along the way. The more you practice and get exposed to recursive problems, the bigger your recursive muscle will be. And finally, if you like this video, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to click on the notification button to be notified every time I publish a new video, and thank you for watching.